Every now and then I see people online complaining that the Unity engine is bloated and slow and unoptimized and while I do think it's true to some degree, it also has to do with developers not knowing how to optimize their project. So today we're investigating whether there actually is bloat in the Unity engine, if that bloat can be removed and if removing it will impact performance. Spoiler alert, the answers to these questions are yes, yes and oh boy. I'm Leonard, welcome to Useless Chem Dev. First thing first, this video is sponsored by JetBrains because their IDEs, Rider and WebStorm are now free for non-commercial use and I'll tell you more about that as we go along. Let's say I made a very simple game project in the style of cookie clicker or those idle economy games. It would be about baking some bread and making some dough. Get it? Because you... In this game you can click on the big dough ball to generate money and once you have enough money you can buy a baguette which will generate one unit of money per second. Keep clicking and soon you will be able to afford another baguette, raising your production to 2 units per second, and so on until you unlock the croissant, croissant. which will generate more money per second, etc, etc. Very simple game, in fact it uses barely any feature of the engine, there's no physics, no 3D rendering, no audio, no nothing. Of course, if I were to make an actual game like this, it wouldn't actually make sense to use such a game engine. But I made this on purpose so we can see what features are bundled with our very simple project. Let's build it and look at the generated files. W what's all this? XR? Terrain? Vehicles? Why does this game need to ship with all those libraries if it uses none of the features? It's time to introduce you to... The Performancer! Dive with me into the arcane art of optimization and perform profiling rituals to make time itself bow to our will. <coughs> the first and easiest step we can take is enabling managed stripping. Basically, when enabling stripping, Unity will scan the code at build time to remove unused code. There are multiple settings. Do be aware that at the highest tier, Stripping might actually be a little aggressive and remove functions you call in unusual ways, for instance using reflection. With this project, that barely uses anything, the DLL count was cut in half, from 134 to 67, and the build size went down 17 megabytes, which is crazy to me that in an almost empty project, there's 90 megabytes of stuff, with so much of it being useless and, as it turns out, even more, as we'll see in a moment. But anyway, this shouldn't make much difference in terms of performance. If it really is unused code, there shouldn't be much of an impact. And indeed there wasn't. I'll put a big table at the end for people who want to take a closer look at the results, but assembly stripping was within a margin of error in terms of frame rate difference. Let's dive deeper and investigate the player loop. Like most game engines, Unity relies on an infinite loop where every iteration of the loop represents a frame. At each frame, the program reads the user's input for this frame, updates the game, renders the update game to the screen, and then waits for some amount of time to match the target frame rate. That's the gist of what the player loop is. If we fetch the default player loop in the Unity engine and print it out, we get a list of 135 systems. There's your typical update, late update, there's physics processing, but also a lot more stuff. Here's the XR again. Here's the video player and web request, and this! Do you mean to tell me every Unity game ships by default with code that is meant to handle the Kinect? We need to do a thorough clean of all this mess. Let's make a method that searches and eliminates a specific system from a loop. It's a bit tedious to do considering Unity's player loop is a tree struct, but recursive functions are no match for the performancer. Once the function was operational, I listed all systems and split them into multiple groups. Stuff I'm sure I can call, I don't use Physics 2D in this project. Stuff I'm pretty sure I can call, like I'm not entirely sure what batch mod update does, but I can try to remove it and see what happens. And finally, stuff I think is meant to stay, I'm pretty sure I need to keep send mouse events. After some testing, I managed to cut the list down to 40 systems, while retaining full functionality of the game. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to set up the player loop before runtime. It would have been cool to be able to set it in the editor and then build a project I'm sure it would allow many more DLLs to be stripped. But as far as I can tell, 
All we can do is call these systems at runtime, after they've all been loaded. Did it make any difference in terms of performance though? I'm pretty sure most of these systems are pretty light when they have nothing to do. For instance, the web request one probably goes something like, are there any web requests? No? Let's move on then. Well, I can tell you it did. The overall experience got a lot smoother, with the delta time 1% low and 1% high getting a somewhat significant boost in this nearly empty project, because most of the loop time is spent running those unnecessary systems. Sadly, with a more complex scene, there wasn't much of a difference. This video is already getting a bit too long, so if you want details on how I built and profiled this more complex scene, head over to the Patreon page for some extra content. There's another trick we can use, although it does require you to be careful. This tip is provided by Binary Impact, they not only publish cool Unity tips under the well-named hashtag Unity Tips, they also just released a game about parking, you should check them out. Back to our project, you will have noticed that by default the new project template has some boilerplate setup and packages added to it when you create a project through the Unity Hub. However, any folder with an assets and a project settings subfolders even if they're empty, is a valid Unity project you can open via the hub. Opening such an empty folder results in a truly barebone project. To be honest, it's a bit unstable until you've manually re-added some of the settings and packages you need. By default, it comes with no packages other than the multiplayer center, which can actually be removed, and I only had to add the Unity UI package as this is the only feature I use here. I also added the JetBrains Rider plugin because it makes developing with Rider a breeze. Not only is Rider a fully featured IDE with debug capabilities and a modern look, it will give you extra information such as who wrote this function or how often it's called, how many references there are, and with the Unity integration, it will tell you what function is a Unity event, warn you about some Unity specific quirks and potential exceptions, even help you reorder your operations to be more efficient. I've been using Rider for a little while and I find it is packed with features while being so much more readable than other IDEs. Like, look at this sticky header. It's stupid, it's a minor detail of the interface, and I'm supposed to know what class I'm currently working in. Yet I keep finding myself glancing at it every now and then, and the user experience is vastly improved by tons of seemingly trivial things like this. There's an integrated Git client that shows you the diffs of what you're working on before committing, Rider will import your settings and shortcuts from your previous IDE automatically, and best of all, it's free! Both Rider and WebStorm IDEs are now free for non-commercial use, and that's great news for your hobby game project or your content creation endeavor. You can learn more about Rider and WebStorm using the link in the description. Let's see what impact this aggressive calling technique has had on our build. We stripped another 20 DLLs and the build size went down another 10 megabytes, which is cool for a project that's basically empty. And the impact on frame rate has been actually pretty decent. I mean, we do see a 30% improvement on delta time 1% lows, which means the overall experience is somewhat smoother. And in a complex scene, we get a significant increase in both our average and median FPS. In fact, if we look at the frequency graph of delta times, it seems the bell curve has shifted to the left by quite a bit. So I'd say, yay? This method does require you to take some more time to set up your Unity project though, as really it does not work out of the box the way you'd expect it to. And I guess that's why the default template project has so much stuff. It helps you to just get in there and start making games. But if you want to get a few more FPS and are willing to take the time to set things up, I guess it's worth it. So, what have we learned during this investigation? Well, first of all, yes, there is stuff in the Unity engine that's bundled by default with every project and isn't necessarily useful in your project. It doesn't cause a dramatic drop in performance, but I'd love to see a more modular approach from Unity to let developers pick what modules and features they want. If we had such a fine-grained modularity, we can then set up various configurations for instance, a light, barebone version of the engine for devices where power use or build size are critical. Until then, combining the methods I talked about, we can squeeze some more FPS out of the Unity engine, which is always welcome in a game project. I'll put the details of the profiling results on screen now, and if you're a nerd, you can pause the video and look at them for yourself. I intentionally left out IL2CPP, as really whether you should use it or not depends on the platform you're targeting, Sometimes you cannot even use it, sometimes you have to use it, it really is a case-by-case -case thing. 
I hope you learned something in this project. I certainly did and I'll certainly reuse my player loop cleaning method on more projects now. There's a ton of links in the description regarding the player loop if you're interested, especially this video by Gitamend on how to implement your own systems and add to the player loop. Don't forget to check out JetBrain's IDEs, both Rider and WebStorm are now free for non-commercial use and they're terrific IDEs. You can get started creating games with Rider right now using the link in the description, there's even a Godot integration. Have fun tinkering with the Unity engine and see how it boosts your projects and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one!